Hi, and welcome to the Travel Boss. Today's video is about the top 10 things to do in Kaunas. The city of Kaunas really surprised me on my travels through Lithuania. It was quirky, bohemian, historical, and somewhere unlike anywhere else. It was truly unique, and there is so much more to it than what meets the eye. Every street corner had a different story to tell. So if you're looking for unusual things to do in Kaunas, I think you're going to be spoiled for choice here. From breathtaking street art, the cobbled streets of the old town, ancient castles, and even a devil museum. Make sure you schedule enough time to enjoy what Kaunas has to offer. Have fun with these tips. We also recommend using a guide. You can book a two-hour sightseeing tour via a link in the description. Let's get started. Number 10. Admire Kaunas Castle. Having been to Trakai Castle in Lithuania, I have to admit, Kaunas Castle didn't impress me as much as all that. But it is still a beautiful building that you can visit in the old town. This medieval castle was built in the 14th century and is one of the first brick castles in Lithuania. It was unique in the way it had two defense walls to protect against the Crusaders. However, people still aren't completely sure who ordered the construction. In 1408, it lost its status when the city was granted Magdeburg rights, and the town moved the infrastructure to the town hall square. Number 9. The Ninth Fort of Kaunas Fortress Although a little way out of the main city of Kaunas, the Ninth Fort is something I would encourage every tourist to visit. It tells a dark story about the Russian Empire and Lithuanians being forced into hard labor camps. It's also the location of the massacre of 50,000 Jewish nationals during World War II. The museum is split into two sections. The first goes through the history of the fort and how it played a role in the occupation of Lithuania by the Russians, Soviets, and Nazis. Then the hardest part is walking through the ninth fort of Kaunas itself. It really gave me the chills and was quite difficult to process the tragedies that took place inside the walls of the fort. At many points I was in tears, it broke my heart. Although it is painful, it's also necessary to learn about these atrocities so they don't repeat themselves. So I found it a very powerful and enlightening museum. Number 8. Take a stroll through Kaunas Old Town I love the old towns in Lithuania. They were colorful, quaint, and had lots of character and Kaunas is no exception. The first thing you may notice about Kaunas Old Town is the way that most buildings are quite short. Well, the reason why is that there was a rule years ago that the town could not build more than two floors per building. The cobbled streets in the area will lead you straight to the town hall in Kaunas Castle. During this time, you'll pass admirable boutiques, inviting cafes and restaurants dotted along the strip. Have a look out for the interesting architecture here. There are lots of different historical styles and church spires, plus some interesting statues that tell a story. More on that below. You could spend hours getting lost. Number 7. Kaunas Town Hall Square As I was visiting Kaunas at Christmas, I chose a pretty special time of year to visit. The town hall had the most fantastic Christmas tree right in the middle of the square with festive market stalls surrounding it. Apparently, the main cities of Lithuania try to have a little competition with each other of who can have the best Christmas tree. I need to say it Vilnius, but Kaunas killed it. They concentrated their tree this year on sustainability and so all the decorations on the tree were from recycled materials. As well as the tree, there were eight chairs and all sorts of photo-worthy spots. Even Santa was there to greet everyone. Number 6. Kaunas Cathedral Basilica of St. Peter and St. Paul Just beyond the town hall square is the Kaunas Cathedral Basilica. It doesn't look so impressive from the outside, almost severe in fact, but when you go inside, you'll see what the fuss is all about. Despite the fact that it was nighttime and it was under construction when I visited, it still took my breath away. This Gothic church was built sometime in the 15th century, although the exact date is unknown. Many pilgrims visit this church today to catch a glimpse of the 16th century painting of Our Lady of Sorrows. Number 5. Visit Kimo Galerija. Kaunas has a plethora of street art and even its own street art festival. But if you're on limited time, and just want to get a flavor then stop by the Chemo Galleria or the Courtyard Gallery. This street art yard was one of my favorite places in the whole city 
and really defies the concept of a traditional gallery or reality itself. It was originally set up by Vitinus Jacobs when he moved into the area and was annoyed about the lack of community spirit. He felt that modernization is alienating neighborhoods and so asked his neighbors for their stories and photos of residents who used to live there. Number 4. Star Cedar This was originally an illegal piece of artwork, made on a statue outside of the Connus War Museum. But it won a competition and was loved so much it was revived. Star Cedar sees the statue of a man sowing seeds and also becomes a Star Cedar by night. You have to check it out after the sun goes down. Number 3. Visit Christ's Resurrection Church Once you reach the top of Zalia Kalmas Hill on the funicular, you must head on over to the Resurrection Church. Or if you're feeling like some exercise, you can climb up here the traditional way by the steep stairs. This Roman Catholic Church is the largest basilica church in the Baltics. As well as its architecture, the church has a colorful story. The construction started in 1934 and was declared a masterpiece of modern architecture. Approximately 1 million lite were spent to build the church. Unfortunately, in the Soviet era, it was confiscated by the government. Stalin decreed that it would be used as a factory and the crucifix and any religious parts of this building were taken down. It was then used as a radio factory until Lithuanian independence. Once the awakening happened, it then switched hands back to a church. Funding was brought in to reconstruct it to its original glory, and it was then consecrated in 2004. As well as being a religious house today, it's used for community gatherings. Number 2. Take a bus to the Pazaslis Monastery I was gutted that I didn't have enough time to see the Pazaslis Monastery, but it closed early on a Saturday and it was going to take me another 45 minutes to reach there by bus, so I put it on the list for next time. The famous Pazaslis Monastery is the largest monastery complex in Lithuania and was originally founded in 1662. It is also one of the finest examples of Italian Baroque architecture in the country. It was originally built as a Roman Catholic church for the Order of the Kamaldolese Hermits by Krzysztof Zygmunt Pack, who was a nobleman of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Number 1. The Hidden Church of Street Gertrude As you are wandering through the old town, you may stumble across the Church of Street Gertrude. It can be found through a gate on Lays Olesia. The style of this church reminded me of the Church of Stayan in Vilnius, as it was built in the same Gothic brickwork style. I later found out it is one of the oldest brick Gothic churches in Europe. The exact date of the church is unknown but historians believe it was built in the early 15th century and it was decreed by the Grand Duke of Lithuania Alexander to be the parish church of Kaunas. What do you think about this video? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.